let's move on um to topics i want to talk about number one topic here to talk about something again that i thought was really really um poignant to kind of bring up because mostly in these kind of topics or mostly when these kind of situations happen you hear about the case we don't necessarily hear the update on what actually happened in the end right so i'm gonna say this um so this is a news from bbc uh jls star otis williams or otis or otis um not guilty of rape and this is um again i'm really happy for the dude don't know him personally but i saw this news break a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago and i was really shocked but i was like fuck you know that looks awful didn't read that much into it again but then found out later on that there was some you know misgivings with the case of roy it seemed like his case had got completely checked out and he'd been vindicated on paper um so far but let's read the entire report uh former jailist star otis williams has been found not guilty of raping a woman in his hotel room the singer 32 denied the attack after a concert in wolverhampton in december 2016 the ex-boy band members tour manager um uh Jameen Nagada Nagada Hans 32 has also found not guilty. Prosecutors allege Mr. Williams of Craden, South London, jumped on the woman as she looked looked for her phone during a nine-day trial Wolverhampton Crown Court. Mr. Williams said he met the woman who cannot be named for legal reasons again, which is a really annoying part of it. Right? Imagine you accuse somebody of rape. That's the thing that again that um, annoys me. I think if, if you get if you get found not guilty, I think if you get found not guilty the woman's name should be released. I don't understand why she can't name because, because I guess there's a part of me that thinks, okay, there's two ways you can look at this, right? There's a part of me that thinks if somebody has been found not guilty of rape, it depends how easy. Yeah. There's a part of me that thinks if you have been found not guilty of rape, maybe part of the allegation was an attempt to extort money from the celebrity. Now that could be one case. It could also be the case that, sometimes it's really hard to prove if somebody tried to rape you right because i think i've read somewhere that rape cases don't always go to court they're hard to prove sometimes the women don't go and get um don't have the uh, what you call it uh when a rape happens the last thing they want to do is go to the hospital and get a rape kit or whatever have be analyzed towards the family that's been raped they go home they shower you know the evidence is already gone so that you know against a distraught situation they don't again i'm um, having an interview with a police officer and retelling the or recounting the entire story can be really really just dis- um soul destroying i can understand that too but there's a side of me that's like if you're in a hotel room with jls and he's former and he's um tour manager who maybe is popular in that kind of realm and if you're a fan girl of jls you probably know who that guy is there's an element of me that's a bit like hmm you know i'm not too sure about that and it's a bit it's a, again if you get found out guilty i think you should be able to deal with the consequences of both things even if even if the person got off on a on a technicality you should also be fighting your case still continuing to fight if you're the lady right it should it should still be a thing that's, that's ongoing i guess your the only reason that could not happen is because the woman herself could be like you know what I've had enough of the press coverage because I'm sure some people out there know who she is, which is already annoying and already kind of camped out in front of a house. She's a, I've had enough with my family getting tormented. I just want I just want to be over with this thing. So maybe that's the case, but I'm not too sure. But again, I, I'm not I'm not happy with that side of the thing. That's a little bit annoying for me. Um, the, the during that day trial in Wolverhampton, Mr. Williams said he met the woman who cannot be named for legal reasons. Two friends at a meet and greet at an event in a nightclub. Miss Williams told jurors he got along very, very well with the woman and she had an initiated a highly sexual charge display at a VIP area at the venue, right? So she was grinding on him, having a good time, they're having drinks, he was living his best life, you know, doing a little J-list kind of walkthrough and pick up his bag and enjoying his life. He said that he then engaged in consensual sex in his hotel room, but this ended in embarrassment when he was unable to perform sexually, cool, right? So they got they got got ready, got, got about, to, about to get it on and he couldn't get it up. No problem so far, right? Seems normal. Miss, the manager from Hounslow, West London, said he had tried to start a threesome because the sex was cringy and he thought the woman... What? Do you start threesomes because you think it's cringy? That's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? I'm not too sure, but that sounds a bit dodge. Um, da, 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 it was cringy and he thought the woman was probably not enjoying it. So he thought she wasn't enjoying the one-on-one sex, so he thought he'd make it more enjoyable by jumping in. Bro, managers are fucking weird, isn't it? Just get, why are you even in the room, bro? Like, kick out, man. What the fuck? Kick rocks. He told the court he had touched a woman in an intimate area for five to six seconds, reasonably believing she was consenting, but she did not respond and he went back to his bed. The woman told the court like a dead, she lay like a dead boy during sex, which she had said didn't want to happen. But Mr. Williams said he she had asked to spend a night with him and also thanked him 
when they parted ways. Of course, so I'm assuming they probably had footage of the CCTV inside the club. They probably saw her being really, um, you know, sexually forward with him, even though she was intoxicated. So there might be a personal accountability there in that respect. They looked like they were enjoying themselves and she was willingly going, leaving the nightclub with him, blah, blah, blah. Uh, three years of hell. Mark Cotter, defending Miss Williams, uh, suggested the accusations against the singer were influenced by the extreme reaction of the complaints uh, compliance friend after being told of the consensual encounter. Ah, so they're saying that even though the girl wanted it, when she told her friends what happened, they reacted really bad, and then that made her think that something bad happened, which is quite normal, right? This is why in some cases. I've seen pickup artists do that thing where they want to isolate, right, girls from groups and stuff. It sounds creepy. It sounds cringy. It sounds kind of rapey, I know. But the, uh, the the kind of, the way of thinking behind it is that usually there might be a couple of girls in that crew that are like, you know, again, secretly jealous, envious that, you know, they get friends is always the one that's getting picked up and they're not getting any action and they just want to block it. Or it just might be a strictly, a kind of, you know, um, uh, a strictly just um just to make things easier, like, because, you know, they were staying over at a house, that girl's house, and they all want to go back home together. They don't want to be left alone in the club, so they don't want you to talk, talk, talk to their friend, right? It can just be sim simple as that. But I do understand sometimes how odd that can get in a group setting. And sometimes, well, girls and guys are the same, right? How many times have you hooked up with a girl and you haven't told your mates about it, right? Because you don't want to be judged. You don't want them to start talking nonsense and start saying things about you. We've all done it, right? I guess we've all done it. Well, I know I have anyway. Um... He said um, there was no realistic answer as to why he would do it. Jurors deliberated for about two hours before Miss Williams uh, were unanimously acquitted. Again, that that is for me is a big thing because I'm sure there was evidence. I'm sure there was CCTV cameras from the hotel, from the nightclub, from the streets around, especially if it's in an area where a nightclub is, there's probably CCTV all over the streets. They could have been able to ascertain if or not if it was consensual or not. You can see quite clearly. And again, I'm not, I, again, even if it wasn't consensual, I'm, I'm really, really, really against this idea that, you know, there isn't any personal responsibility for women in these kind of encounters. I think you shouldn't go to anyone's room anyone's bedroom right this is a, this is a, this is not even about the conversation about slut walking that sort of stuff and women should be able to wear mini skirts forget that right wear what you want i don't care grind on who you want to grind on but when it goes to, when it comes to coming up to someone's room you shouldn't go go to anyone's room if you're not willing to engage or if you're not going even to um entertain the idea that you guys might engage in some kind of sexual encounter it shouldn't happen now, you could argue back and say, yeah, but I should be able to go up if I want to, right? It's my right. If I want to just go in and just sleep, I should be able to. Yes, cool. But I also think you should be aware of not putting yourself in harm's way, right? Because there's some dudes who aren't as gentlemanly as others, right? I've been in situations where we've gone to a house party and, um, you know, some of my friends might end up hooking up with a couple of girls in a house party, but then, you know, a couple of them are really wasted and they stay at house and we just leave. There's no time we've had, we've done that. We've just kind of like, you know what, we're just going to leave. We don't want to stay. And in other situations, there are other guys who just who just stay, right? And try to hook up with a girl, even though they know she's completely wasted. And if you know anything about house parties or, you know, just generally when you're hanging out with girls in those kind of environments, they tend to get a lot more blackout drunk than dudes would be, mainly because, you know, they're usually uncomfortable in those situations. They just want to feel more relaxed. They want to get in the zone. They, you know, it's their birthday. They want to let their hair down a bit. I don't know. Just It always seems as if when I'm in a house party, the girls are always way more drunk than the guys are, right? So I think it's our responsibility as as like men to kind of like survey the situation and be responsible and be like, you know what, I'm going to go home. Even myself, I've kind of been out with people and it's, it looked like we were going to hook up with a certain girl. I was going to hook up with a certain girl instead of hooking up and it didn't really work out. And I'd send them home in a cab. Right? I'd call, give them an Uber and tell them to go home. So text them in the morning and say, hope you got home all right. And they have no recognition of what happened. And imagine if we consented, imagine if we went through and had sex then. What would happen then? Right, they'd wake up in the morning, regret what happened. Then they'd think, "Oh, actually, did it? Did I want it to happen?" Just it creates unnecessary drama. So I honestly think, for the guy, there is, you know, there's not many signs that you can read. Right, like all you have to go on is what's in front of you. If she's grinding on you, whispering in your ear, telling you what she wants to do with you after saying we suggested things, that's all you can go on. You're gonna fit court. It's on. But I think for the woman, because you're the ones that choose, the power's really in your hands to be like, you know what. I'm not going to go up to this guy's room. He's being a bit too touchy-feely. He's being a bit too forward. I'm just going to go home. I know, again, it doesn't it doesn't sound right, but I just think that's the right thing to do. I honestly do think so. Like, I think there's a lot of personal accountability on both sides, right? On both ends. On the guy's end as well for not trying to push things too far. I think the guy's, the manager saying, you know, oh, the manager in the story is saying, oh, like it was too cringy, so I wanted to step in and make it more comfortable. That sounds weird. So, you know, it will make you kick that dude out. But I just think in general, 
if the guy's not being too forward and the girl isn't too fucked up, I think you both have to kind of have personal responsibility for it. If you end up regretting in the end, cool. And also, don't let your friends convince you that you got raped. That's fucked up, man. What kind of friends do you have? Like, convince you you got raped. It's like, mm, what? I might have been fucked up, but I like this guy. I fancy him since I was young. You know what I mean? He's in JLS. I don't know. Like, it's really strange. Anyway, let's continue with the, with the story. Joe's deliberated for two hours before Williams and... and Nagadan, Nagadanda, however you pronounce his name, well, he never acquitted. Mr. Williams, former bandmate of Marvin Hume, celebrated the verdict on social media, saying it was three years of hell. And then, you know, again, which I'm happy to see because that's what that's what I was guided to see with the James Charles thing, right? All these friends ditching him and not following him anymore, and then sending him text messages in private. Just absolute scumbags of people. But I'm happy to see, like, you know, uh, Marvin going out there and putting an entire picture up on Facebook and, I mean, on Instagram saying, cleared, not guilty. Finally, my brother at Autist Music, three years of hell is over. No one will ever know or imagine what he was been through. Um, I'm just so proud of the way he conducted himself during what has been the most awful time. He is so strong, and I know he can't wait to start his life again now. We love you, which is awesome, right? It's what you want to see. When, you're, when it's your friend, back them, right? Back back your friends, man. Don't be a, don't be a pussy. His wife said the same thing too. Rochelle, there's of the uh, this is here is our brother, one of the kindest, most gentle, thoughtful men I know. Today he was cleared of not guilty after three years of absolute hell. I'm so proud of who you have conducted, of how you conducted yourself throughout this time. I really don't think I could have had held myself in the same way. Rich, we love you so much, and I'm writing this crying. So many happy tears. It's over. So yeah, um, glad for o- again, glad to Otis Williams again because these things don't happen too often, right? People getting acquitted of rape, especially high-profile uh, figures. So when it does happen, I think you should be as um, you should report it the same way when it gets reported that he's been charged, right? Because it was everywhere. I saw it plus everywhere. So again, um, happy for Otis. Again, thoughts and thoughts go out to the lady in question. If it was an honest mistake, if it was something that she thought would happen, then cool. If it was something vindictive, I think you really need help. You need to kind of sort yourself out. If it's your mate that convinced you to do the charge you might need to change your friends but regardless hopefully everyone can kind of move on from this and learn and kind of you know progress through life i think but again like i said in general in the beginning guys have responsibility to not take advantage of women in those kind of situations right if they're highly intoxicated or they're infatuated with you because of your celebrity and fame but also women have also a big responsibility because you're the ones that choose right to decide whether or not you to go up to someone's room or not like don't just walk up you know what i mean don't just assume it's going to be okay don't do that because you never know who you're going to be uh, saddled next to it could be a complete psycho and you don't want to end up in a situation like this no one would anyway i'd imagine so